beginning of last hour, we were talking about, or I brought up that I saw this. It was very kind of quick throwaway mention about, oh, you know, Kevin Smith gave up weed. I'm like, wait, hold on, what? Wait, uh, did, I, did I read that right? Kevin Smith gave up weed? Is that fake news? That's got to be fake news. So as we're sitting there talking about this and then read the whole thing about Seth Rogen said, oh, yeah, well, you know, he's kind of, he was a latecomer. Right. Late in life uh, lover of weed. And so it's easier for people like that to give it up. More like a weed tourist. But I, I would have uh-huh. never described Kevin Smith as a weed tourist. No, definitely right. not. I, uh, I texted him. He said he would uh, he would call in and then we could uh, we can go right to the horse's mouth. So, ladies and gentlemen, writer, director, actor, all around great guy, former weed enthusiast, <laughs> Kevin Smith. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Why, good morning, kid. Good morning. How are you? Good. How's, good. Uh, how's everything in New Jersey? Um, everything in Jersey is good. I'm, I am in Jersey at the moment. Woody texted me and goes, can we call you? And I wrote, I'm in Jersey. He goes, they still have phones there? And I was, yeah. <laughs> well, yes. Um, I'm here for, uh, we're doing, uh, you know, Mark Bernard and uh, my buddy, I do Fat Man Beyond with the podcast. Um, we're uh, doing a mini film festival out here at my theater. I own a movie theater yep. in my hometown, Atlantic Islands, New Jersey. And so we're doing a, a festival called the Ides of Mark which, of course, yesterday was the Ides of March. Mm -hmm. And I was supposed to be coming back to Los Angeles for a Saturday show with Ralph, Hollywood Babylon, at Flappers Comedy Club, but that's been moved to April 15th, uh, right before 420, which will be a different different 420. As the kids say, it'll hit different. Yeah. 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 So, Kevin, I got to ask, man, like, I don't know if I've known anybody who was as much into weed as it seemed like you were for the longest time. In fact, uh, you know, when my Aunt Chrissy was uh, visiting, I, uh, I called Kevin and I said, hey, man, you got to give me some tips here. Yeah. Yep. You know, like, uh, you know, what to get. He gave me the shopping list. I, I, he's the go-to guy. So I'm really surprised. What happened that you gave up weed? I, I just got to a place with it where, I, look, I love weed. Very much, obviously. And um, I believe in its medicinal value. I, I'm, this is not me demonizing weed by a stretch of the imagination, but I used it to numb out. And, you know, I've been smoking. I almost reached my 15-year anniversary. Uh, your 15-year uh, weed uh, coin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could have got my weed coin. I could have yeah. been coined out. <laughs> the uh, You know, I started on, at, at the very tail end of Zach and Miri uh, after I smoked with Seth. Um, and, uh, it, it went as long as it went. And then one day I was just kind of realizing that, you know, unlike the, I mean, this long and short answer is I just, I abused it. Um, I went to a place where I was just present, but never present, you know, numbed out. And it's fine to, you know, kind of get loose if you will, periodically, but I, I would smoke from the moment I woke up. Until the moment I went to sleep, and I'd sleep for four hours, and then I'd wake up and start the whole process again. So over the course of the last 10 years, there's never been a moment where weed hasn't been coursing through my system. THC hasn't been coursing through my system. So, you know, I I felt like maybe I can see if I can do this for a month. Let me see if I can put down for a month. Okay. Uh, And then let me see if I can, you know, it reached a month, and I was like, let me see if I can put down for another month. I mean, you and did the so, same thing. Uh, I was saying, like, if there's a guy who can, you know, really kind of commit himself and have the willpower, I mean, just with what you did, the transformation after the heart attack, you gave up right. sugar, and even you, you've told us a number of times about the different things, which would be Truly, damn near, yeah. if not and completely right now, impossible for a lot of people, but you have that ability. Right now, I'm, uh, like, weight-wise, you know, I've always had an ongoing, uh, as long as I've had a career, a public career, I've also had an ongoing uh, battle with weight loss and stuff, and right now, uh, my top weight was 330 pounds, and right now I'm 180. So Lucky. I'm like 150 yeah. Damn. down from where I was. You could take so dumps that are 180 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I said, if I can do that, that, maybe I can do this as well. And so yeah. far, yeah. Tuesday was seven weeks. So oh, seven weeks been counting so far. So and did again, this, this was this not a... me going like, Everyone should stop weed. Not yeah, by yeah, yeah. My question yeah. is, did something happen? Like, did like was there like something like, man, like if I wasn't so numbed out, I would have been present for this. So like, you know, like um, like an event, like an event, mm-hmm. or like some kind of, you know, maybe did, was this like through like therapy or something? Because you did say it. I the thing I read this morning, I uh, wasn't really present anymore, and I was using the cover a very big wound in my heart. 
Yeah, when I started smoking, it was um, it was at this period where like Zach and Mary had flopped and Too Fat to Fly had happened, and I got into like a fight with film critics, which is like the dumbest thing a filmmaker could do. <laughs> um, yeah. And so there was a lot of like a pain and a lot of like, oh my god, I, I, I just don't want to think about this. And into that moment, you know, came weed. And suddenly I was like, oh, I don't have to think about that. I don't think about anything. So, you know, it was a small, I've described it thusly. It's like, you know, there was a small wound on, on, on my heart and I yeah. used a weed bandage and covered it. And then the weed, then the, the, the wound got bigger. And so more bandages and soon, well, not even soon, it took me about 15 years, but 15 years in, I was kind of just a mummy covered in bandages and, you know, experiencing life through, through gauze more than anything yeah. else. So that was, that was me again. I don't want people out there to smoke. weed go like, what? No, like I, just, I got bad, real bad. Yeah. Um, I kind of felt like, all right, let me, let me put down and see what happens. And so yeah. far so good. The only difference I can report is my Lord, life is crisp. <laughs> yeah. wow, for real. <laughs> and it just comes at you like a hundred miles per hour. Yeah. Uh, the weirdest experience I've had thus far being weed free, because uh, it creates a lot more time for me. So the weirdest thing that happened was uh, I went to see quantum mania and it wasn't so much the film going experience. It was afterwards, just walking out onto city walk. Holy, holy cow. Yeah. It, that was, that was so loud bright more more <laughs> yeah. more yeah yeah, yeah like and sometimes people do drugs to kind of feel more of, yeah uh, more of something whatever but you're saying you know not without yeah. the, the 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 haze uh -huh. of weed or whatever things are just kind of crisp like you yeah. said more crisp more I bright know. but i mean it's crazy the headline kevin smith no longer smoking weed yeah it was crazy. surprising yeah, I, right, yeah. right before i went to bed last night i saw i guess uh, seth uh, rogan was on Justin Long's podcast and Justin brought it up and, and Seth was like, well, you know, he's a late bloomer. Um, <laughs> I mean, compared to Seth, I guess we're all late. Yeah. Bloomers. Well, he yeah. called you an interloper. You were a tourist. It was just a phase for you because a you can't use your phase. A fa <laughs> a fa he was, I, I think you, if you said, uh, quote, I think if you come into weed late in your life, it's easier to give up. You're an interloper. You're a tourist. It's just a phase for you. But for me, it is me. Right. Yeah. I, I, yeah. And I would agree with his, his truth. And, uh, I, you know, I started at 38 and stopping now at 52. So, you know, that's a yeah. 12, 13 year journey. Uh, I, you know, does that count as a phase? I'd leave it up to the maestro himself to, yeah. to say. But, has it, but uh, has it changed any of your uh, cravings? Yeah. Do you, you need know? a new vice is what I wanted to ask. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, people, when they get high, they get hungry. Some people do. Yeah. Um, you know, has it changed anything else uh, for you, like diet wise or craving wise? No, not in the least. I haven't. Uh, I've, I've yet to kind of encounter what replaces it. Well, I mean, I mean, this is going to sound so goofy, but this doesn't replace it. But I. I <laughs> I buy a lot of lavender now. <laughs> oh, that's it. <laughs> a lot of lavender. It's from the like, earth, not, man. Not as much, not as much weed as I. Uh -huh. used to, but like, I go into Whole Foods and they've got these like bottles of, of lavender aromatherapy, and I guess oh. it's pretty common. <laughs> yeah. So. I, you know, if you run into me, you're going to be like, boy, you smell fresh. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's <laughs> generally like a glade stick. I, like everything in life. The actual thing, like, you know, recently I started, this is going to sound weird. I didn't, this doesn't replace weed, so please don't let that become a story. But recently I started eating blueberries for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wild. I'm a vegan, Lavender but I'm not real big. <laughs> yeah. You're like a chick I'm, now. What is happening? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like low tea. Somebody told, me, somebody told me online, they were like, Hey man, you gotta be careful with that lavender because it'll give you a lot of estrogen. You'll grow man boobs. I, like, yeah. I I had those. I, I, yeah. I, I've lived life with man boobs before, so I know yeah. what that's like. Yeah. But blueberries, like you know, I've, I've eaten blueberry flavoring or like blueberry pop tarts my whole right, life. But never real ones. And so I figured, like, let me try it, like real blueberries, and it's just not nearly the same experience. Like real blueberries don't give you like the sugar rush that a fake blueberry does, but. 
That that has I, I don't I'm, I'm certainly not saying hey if you're trying to get off weed yeah try lavender and yeah. blueberry if you yes. didn't have lavender <laughs> but for me you know I guess like weed for me was always about calming me down and and now I you know I'm like well this calms me down yeah there yeah. You go. yeah in the course of the first month of me not smoking weed I wrote a kids book that I've been wanting to write for 23 years since my kid was born you know I was like oh my god I'm gonna write this book. For Harley. Harley's now 23 and has her own house. So it took yeah. me. Um, I'm working on this Green Hornet TV show, a cartoon, which is pretty amazing. Um, I wrote two original scripts and rewrote three other scripts. And then I also wrote an FX pilot. When I say it, it created time for me, it yeah, really it sounds like it. Yeah. created some time for me that I had to fill where I was like, well, what am I going to yeah. do without all this? And I was like, I guess I'll just recommit Life moves to writing. now, you know? Yeah. Good for you. It very much does. Now, again, one more time. I don't know. You're not going down on weed. If you, yeah. if you like weed, yeah. smoke that weed. Yeah. I'm just an example of somebody who went too far with it. Right. And Same for you. Now I just want to reclaim and see if I can live life without. You know, I'm, I'm never very comfortable being subject to something, yeah. uh, whether mm-hmm. it be a substance or a person or whatever. And so, you know, it took me a minute. And here I am going, like, well, let me see if I can stand by myself for a while. All right. Well, Kevin, dude, I, I appreciate you uh, taking a couple minutes to call in, and because uh, quite frankly, I didn't believe it when I first saw yeah. it. I yeah. want to uh, it was find fake out. News. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was fake it was news. But... Yours, yours was the first text that I actually woke, actually woke up to this morning. Like, oh. uh, I, the phone is always Bad. off, but I woke <laughs> up and, and opened the phone. The first thing I saw was like, "Did you really quit weed?" <laughs> 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 yeah. I think I better uh, call my boy, Kevin Smith. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Kevin. 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 We love you, man. Thanks for being such a good friend to us. Can I plug something? Yeah, of course. April 15th, Hollywood Babylon. Me and Ralph at Flappers Comedy Club in Burbank, kids, if you're anywhere near the area. And if you're anywhere near New Jersey, yep. we're doing the Ides of Mark. Man, we're watching Streets of Fire tonight at Smont Castle Cinemas. And then Flash Gordon Flash tomorrow. Gordon. And then... Fat man beyond. So go. Nice. come come look at the freak with no weed and see how it went. Somebody had t- texted over and says, I'm meeting Kevin next week in Lexington, uh, and I was going to bring him a Kentucky joint and the crying emoji. <laughs> <laughs> oh, feel free. I'll, I'll sell it to somebody else. <laughs> I, you know, I stopped smoking, but I'm still dealing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Kevin Smith, everybody. Hey, thanks, thanks man. Care, Appreciate Kevin. you calling.